Good morning, students, staff, and especially Father Michael, whom we thank for making the trek to Michael Power St. Joseph so that we can gather virtually as a community to celebrate Holy Mass together from our chapel. A special welcome to Ms. Spadafora's class who have prepared the readings for us today. Today we remember that we are in the holy season of Lent, which is a solemn season of preparation for the death and resurrection of our Lord. As a community of believers, the focus on the pain and suffering of Jesus is important. It reminds us that he is God who walks beside us in our own human suffering. As we approach Holy Week and as he takes up his cross, let us remember our own crosses that we bear. As he stumbled three times on his way, let us remember our own stumbles in our journey. And let us remember that there are always those who will help us as well. Let us be open to the help that is offered to us, just as Jesus, God and man, was open to the help of Simon and to the women who wiped his face. Most important, let us remember that the story does not end at the foot of the cross, that just as morning follows nightfall and the spring has followed winter, hope will always follow despair, especially if we follow Jesus. As we center ourselves in our faith today to allow Jesus to speak to us personally in this Holy Mass, let us rise to welcome Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> My dear friends, we are in this Wednesday Mass, and in a week and a half from now, we'll be entering into the great celebrations of Easter. So Lent is winding down, but in many ways it's winding up as we remember and we reenact the great events of that week that we call Holy Week. As we do so, we pause as a parish or as a school community, thanking God for the opportunity to celebrate our faith, but also asking our God for forgiveness for the times we've not lived it out. And so we say together, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who reward the merits of the just and offer pardon and forgiveness to sinners, have mercy, we pray, on those of all, all of us who call upon you this day. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, as Angeline comes forward for our first reading, I invite everyone to please be seated. A reading from the Book of Numbers. From Mount Hor, the Israelites set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. This people, the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt? To die in the wilderness? There is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. 
So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it on a pole. And whenever a serpent of bronze bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. Response, O Lord, Lord, hear my prayer prayer and and let let my my cry cry come come to you. Hear my prayer, O Lord, let my cry come to you. Do not hide your face from me. In the day of my distress, incline your ear to me. Answer me speedily in the day when I call. Response, O Lord, Lord, hear my prayer prayer, and let my cry come come to you. you. The nations will fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth your glory. For they, Lord, will build up Zion. He will appear in his glory. He will regard the prayer of the destitute and will not despise their prayer. Response, O Lord, Lord, hear my prayer prayer, and let let my my cry cry come to you. you. Let this be recorded for a generation to come so that people yet unborn may praise the Lord. That he looked down from his holy height to hear the groans of the prisoners to set free those who are doomed to die. Response, O Lord, Lord, hear my prayer prayer, and let my cry come come to you. Please stand, everyone. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again to the temple. All the people came to him, and he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, and making her stand before all of them, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law of Moses, now in the law Moses commanded us to stone such women. What do you say? They said this to test him so that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. And when they kept on questioning him, Jesus straightened up and said to them, let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to cast a stone against her. And again, he bent down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders, and Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, sir. Jesus replied, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way, and from now on do not sin again. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There are parts of today's gospel story that bring to my mind that saying, the more things change, the more they stay the same. And in many ways, yeah, things have changed dramatically in the 2,000 years since Jesus walked on this earth. But there are many things that are still the same. So in today's gospel, of course, Jesus is taking the opportunity to teach people at the great temple in the middle of Jerusalem. That great, you know, this is the most important place in the world for the Jewish people, the temple. And while he's there, his greatest enemies, the scribes and the Pharisees, come to him and they present to him a woman. And they use this woman and how many women have been used by men over the centuries, they use this woman to try to make a point. And, of course, what has happened? This woman has been caught in the act of adultery. 
Well, one thing that comes to mind to me right away is, you know, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Well, the misogyny that we still have in our society was very much the misogyny back then. And why do I say that? Well, because last time I looked up the word adultery, it takes two people. The woman is the only one there. Where is her partner? But they just use the woman for their point. And of course, they present the case to Jesus, but they've already got the answer because according to the old ancient law, she is to be stoned. But they still want to know, what do you do with her? What does Jesus do? He doesn't answer them right away. He bends down and he starts writing on the ground with his finger. This is the only time in the whole go all the four Gospels that we ever hear about Jesus writing. And he's not using a quill, ink, whatever. He's just using his finger and he's writing in the ground. And the one thing St. John never tells us is, what was he actually writing? I'd love to know, actually. You know, was it just a stalling tactic while he was gathering his thoughts? Or was he writing something about the hard-heartedness of men? Well, whatever it is, then we hear that famous response of his that in many ways has become part of our lexicon in the English language. Let the person without sin cast the first stone. And of course, we hear what happens next. Everybody begins to walk away. You know, in so many ways, you know, you think about this situation. And what are, one of the things that they're also doing, the scribes and Pharisees, uh, is they're pointing their finger at this lady. They're pointing their finger at this lady, and at the same time, as they do so, they're trying to use her. It reminds me of finger pointing at other people for what they've done wrong. You know, how much does that still happen nowadays? How much do we see that in our Western society? You know, a famous figure from the world of music or entertainment is, quote, busted for one reason or another. And everybody, we all get very righteous, <laughs> and we point our finger at them. Now, remember this, my friends, and we all do finger pointing at times. We can even do this within this high school community. I always like the famous saying about finger pointing. Remember, when you point your finger at somebody else, remember, you got three fingers pointing at yourself. Think about that. Yeah, you're pointing somebody else, but what about you? What about you? And so there is a wisdom in what Jesus says, let the person without sin cast the first stone. We all have things in our lives that we may not be particularly proud of, or we wish could, that would be different. You know, a lot of times, especially as we get older, my friends, you know, a lot of times we can think about the circumstances in our life and we sit there and go, oh man, I wish I could have done that all over again and how I would have done it differently. That's the reality of our lives as human beings. Now there's something else in the story for us to really remember and it takes place right at the end of the story. And it's what Jesus says to the woman. You know, he says, okay, so is no one condemning you? You know, everybody's gone. And she says, no, they're not condemning me. And Jesus says, I do not condemn you either. You think, what a nice guy. But he says something else, my friends. And he says to the woman, go and sin no more. You know, you've been forgiven, but go and sin no more. Now this is a part that kind of makes me cringe, my friends. And why is that? Because in many ways, what Jesus is asking at this point may sound like mission impossible. We are human beings. We sin at times because of a whole variety of reasons. We sin at times. And so when Jesus says, go and sin no more, the cynical 
slash realistic side of me may be saying, yeah, right, good luck with that. It's going to happen again. But you know what, my friends? What is Jesus doing here? He's setting the bar very high for us. And you'll notice that in a lot of his teachings, he asks a lot of us. And why is that? It's not because he's picking on us, because he knows that every single one of us is made in the image and likeness of God, female and male. And it doesn't matter about our skin color or where we come in this world, doesn't matter. We are all made in the image and likeness of God. And therefore, because you are made by God, you fundamentally are beautiful. God doesn't make junk. You know, basic lesson I learned from Mrs. Livingston, my grade one school teacher at St. Marcellus School in Etobicoke. She said that God doesn't make junk, and God made you. You're not junk. And because you're not junk, then Jesus is asking for you to be the best person you can be. And so if we go back to that saying, what's he saying, really? He's saying, do better. Do much better. That's what he says to that woman, and that's what he says to you and I. Do much better. For our God has big expectations of us. God has a plan for every single one of us. It's up to us to cooperate with that plan. The other thing that I like to say a lot too, my friends, is by the way, God doesn't want you to be good. I repeat, God does not want you to be good. God wants you to be great, to be that woman, that man that God is calling you to be. That's how you become great. You know, God wants you to get that A-plus in life. And having to be able to get an A-plus in life doesn't mean you have to have this brilliant intellect. No, to get that A-plus in life means that you live out the teachings of Jesus, you put them into practice, and in many ways, just in what you do and what you say every single day, even in your classrooms, make sure that it's something our Savior would be proud of to see that you are doing. God wants you to be great. And so, maybe in these remaining days of Lent, all I can ask of you is do your best and try to be great. Now, uh, Katerina is going to be coming forward uh, to lead us in our prayers of the faithful. And as she does so, I invite everyone to please stand. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the church that it may become a true community, producing the fruit of love for the world, for the whole world. We pray to the Lord. Response? Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders working together to find solutions to our common global problems, we pray to the Lord. Response? Lord, hear our prayer. For those among us in our homes, our cities, our parishes who are in need of caring and compassion, and for those who reach out to them, we pray to the Lord. Response? Lord, hear our prayer. For students and staff, as we journey through these 40 days of Lent, that we may have the courage to live out our faith, we pray to the Lord. Response? L Lord, hear our prayer. For students and staff, sorry. For the sick in our community, may the light of Christ bring them comfort, healing, and hope. We pray to the Lord. Response? Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may the sleep in the peace of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Response? Lord, hear our prayer. And so, Lord our God, we ask you to hear these prayers, the prayers that have been spoken and the prayers that we offer to you in the quiet of our hearts. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we enter into the liturgy of the Eucharist now, I invite you to please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. 
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit to the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities and please cleanse me from all my sins. Please stand, everyone. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. May the power of the sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, mercifully wipe away all our sins and increase in us the grace of salvation and newness of life. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and help us imitate you and your kindness. And so we glorify you with the countless angels of heaven, as with one voice of praise we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time Jesus was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop, all the clergy, religious, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters, our relatives, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who've died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And so as God's children, we pray together in the words that our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And now, let us graciously share with one another a sign of that peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. So behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy, should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. Let's say together the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present. It's holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I, I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and united myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May your heavenly gifts, O Lord, we pray, which you bestow as a heavenly remedy on your people, not bring judgment to those who receive them. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, uh, our fearless principal will have some words to share with us. Please be seated. Well, thank you to each and every one of you for participating in this beautiful Mass. And as we know, it takes a number of people to allow us to have this, this opportunity to celebrate together as a community, even though we are each in our classrooms. First of all, we thank Ms. Manko, uh, who organized every detail of the Mass and started several weeks ago to do so. We thank Mr. Malik, who started preparing for the video feed in the middle of the week, a few days ago. And without his technological expertise, this celebration would not be possible. And in fact, in many school communities, it isn't possible. So we really are fortunate to be able to have this time. I'd like to thank Grace, our camera person from Ms. Spadafora's class. Wonderful job. And all of Ms. Spadafora's class for preparing the readings today. Uh, specifically, the readers, Angeline, Taylor, and Katerina, you all did a wonderful job. I would like to thank each and every one of our teachers who is taking time out of their curriculum today because we are spreading the news that curriculum is important, but there is a spiritual curriculum also at the school. And that's the curriculum that's going to give us the strength, the resilience, the guidance to be uh, followers of Christ as we move forward in our lives and to be the kind of people that we are called to be. I always love Father Mike's homilies, and today he told us that God expects us to be great. And that's a high ideal for each of us, but it's wonderful trying 
to reach the ideal that we know in our hearts is set for us individually. No one has to tell us, so thank you, Father. And that is, finally, who I would like to give a very special thanks to, because he comes to us every Mass from Nativity of Our Lord so that we can celebrate in the bosom of our school in, from our chapel. He shows his love for MPSJ as an alumnus of Michael Power, and he gives us a message every day that we can each relate to. You can, and I can too. I always take so much away from his words and from his kindness for taking the opportunity to be here. So thank you all for celebrating with us today. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Please stand. <clears throat> One of the things, my friends, is as uh, someone who graduated from this high school a long, long time ago, back in 1978, but it's still, it is a great honor and pleasure for me to come back. I have much pride in this school. My high school years <clears throat> were filled with all kinds of joys and challenges, just like you. But at the same time, it's always stayed in my heart, and this is a very special school for me. So. Thank you for the opportunity just to be able to come back and celebrate with you as well. Uh, shameless plug time, of course. My parish is just straight down uh, on Rathburn Road. It's the closest Catholic church to us. And so going into Holy Week, of course, the churches are reopened, but at a very limited capacity. And so, for example, for like the Palm Sunday weekend or Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Easter, uh, to even be able to get in, you have to register online through our website. And we're limited to 150 people now. My church actually holds 1,000 people, but because of the government regulations, we're limited to 150. But at the same time, we're also live streaming our masses as well. And uh, if you go to our parish website, a very simple website to remember, one word, myparish.org. Myparish.org, and right on the home page, you can find the Holy Week schedule and the links to uh, so, uh, watch the Mass at home if you're unable to come. So this is the most important week of the year for us as Catholics coming up Holy Week. And so uh, it's my hope and prayer that all of us will be able to join into the celebrations of Holy Week in the best way possible. The Lord be with you. And may the blessings of Almighty God be upon all of you this day, my friends the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.